Hello and welcome to Jennifer Matters. I am Jennifer and this is my knitting and mattering video podcast where I blether on about my knitting and other crafting, my life, and anything else that catches my fancy that week or fortnight or month. <laughs> Hello. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Jennifer. I am an American from California originally, living in Scotland with my husband, two children, and two cats one of whom is thinking about going out the window right now. And yeah, it's been three weeks since my last podcast. If you're new, hi. If you're a returning viewer, hi. Um, see, everybody just gets the same hi. Uh, I'm a bit manic because it's been three weeks since my last video and I try to do this every two weeks or I get a bit loopy. Um, but the last three weeks, well, the first week, because I tried to do every two weeks, and then my children went back to school. They were on Easter break. They went back to school the first week, and then my youngest brought home a cold from nursery, and I had it by that weekend, and then it has been something like 10 days. And yesterday was the first day I was starting to feel better. Yesterday was Thursday. Today is Friday. The 7th of May. I had to check that even though I looked it up and wrote it down not that long ago. Uh, yes, today is Friday, the 7th of May. I had a cold. I felt started feeling really bad Sunday a week ago and Thursday I was starting, well Wednesday I was starting to feel better except I also had a headache because I slept funny because I was trying to sleep propped up with pillows so my head could drain all the, you don't need to know that. Anyway, I had a headache so Cold was feeling better, headache was feeling worse. And yeah, I'm feeling, the light is changing and I'm sorry, it's suddenly gone blue. I'm feeling better, but I do, like I can hear a bit of hoarseness in my voice. I've got cough lozenges, I've got herbal tea with honey in. Yay, herbal tea with honey. I've been drinking, this is a different brand since I moved to the UK, but I've been drinking herbal tea with honey to like throat coat type of stuff. Um, since I had walking pneumonia my freshman year in high school, for UK people, that was, I was, it was, how old was I? I was 13 turning 14 then. Um, I got walking pneumonia and since then I get really bad colds. And I drink herbal throat coat tea with honey because it actually helps, but pretty much only as long as you're drinking it which is a lot like cough lozenges that only work as long as you have one in your mouth. Anyway, I will try to get through this without being a complete numpty. Um, I'll try to get through this as quickly as I can before my throat decides that it hates me and I'm not allowed to talk ever again. I have asthma, so when I do get a cold, I get really, really bad coughs, which are the asthma coughs, and then they don't ever want to clear up. And Anyway. Let's get through this before that happens. And before I have to go get my children home from school, because that, I think, oh yes, there's a blackbird running around over there. I'm in the conservatory, so it's windows on three sides, and I will be distracted by everything going on on either side. For instance, this is the third or fourth time I've started recording this, because the previous one, there was movement out of the corner of my eye on that side, which was the people doing construction on the road. Unfortunately, they are no longer... That was the other reason I couldn't record this week. Like, even if I didn't have my cold, I couldn't have recorded because they were doing construction on the road in front of us. And then we're on the corner, so on the road on that side. It's been a lot of fun. I mean, I mentioned I had a headache on Wednesday. I had a headache and they were out there <laughs> with literal jackhammers. It was very fun. Um, but yeah, there was motion on that side. So I turned to look and saw the construction people were doing something. They're done with construction, but they have discovered that our cul-de-sac is a good place to store things so um they've got a whole pile of stuff in the corner there that they're not currently using and then my husband came in he works in an office um, a detached office in the garage not the garage the garden um he owns his own business business and works from home so i suddenly was looking every which way so there's windows on three sides and i'll be distracted every time something moves around um, yes, that's me. I'm very distractible right now. 
I'm going to do this in a slightly different order because I've decided to do this based on knit alongs since that's most of what I'm doing right now um, rather than like all the finished objects and then all the works and progresses. So for last month, for my two knit alongs that I'm doing, um, the Confident Knitting, a third year of techniques from the Arnold Colorford Knitwear Company, family, um, website, uh, was the Evolve Cowl by Hunter Hammerson. And it is this lovely pinky color. This is Dusty Dimples yarn in a base that I think was exclusive to this club. I don't know. I haven't seen it on their website um, or listed on that already. Um, I did look to see if I could get more information about it because the name and the yardage and everything weren't really matching up. Um, but it's Dusty Dimples Worsted, which is a DK yarn. Uh, it was 150 grams, no, 115, 115 grams, 220 meters, which is a DK weight yarn. Um, and it's a super wash. This is the colorway Amore, which I know is on other of their bases. And yeah, I got this with the club kit. So this was the second month and the technique was excellent blocking, which is blocking kind of unusual shapes, things that you don't want to just pin out flat. Um, so Hunter Hammerson for her cowls and hats and stuff. She's kind of known for doing, I know her for doing really elaborate setups where it's not even that you have to do a lot of weird things. It's just that the finished object, like this one, looks like a lampshade because you do um, a flexible wire at the top in a loop and then a flexible wire in the bottom and then you balance things in the middle to hold it up and pin it out. It looks, I mean, people saw the pictures and the first thought was, are we making a lampshade? Which if you want to use it for that, go right ahead. It would look really cool or knit something different. Uh, this came in three widths and two heights. I did the short height and the biggest width. I think if I did it again, I would just add another repeat or two and then just make it a little bit shorter. But this will be a good one for, and that would make it more of a, like a, a shawl cowl for around the house and stuff. But this is a good one for undercoats because it won't add a ton of bulk where I already have a lot of uh, occupied real estate, shall we say. But then you can just kind of have it up around your chin to keep you warm when out for a walk. So it is delightful and lovely. And just when I was thinking it might be a bit warmer than what we need, like the six ply socks I had finished last week, and I was saying it had hailed off and on basically all through the Easter holidays, there was snow on the ground yesterday here, and it has sleeted and snowed and hailed all last week. Um, today, looking outside, it's lovely and sunny, and it's finally warmed up a tiny bit. But yeah, I was definitely wearing a six-ply socks and wearing this under a waterproof coat because it was not nice out there. Um, yeah, but it is a little too warm to wear today, so I just had it on to show you. I will try not to screw my hair up too much because there's not a lot I can do with my hair right now. It is very much lockdown hair. Last summer I cut my own hair a couple of times and I did all right and then I accidentally gave myself a mullet and kind of had to cut it really short for me to try to fix it and it has been super awkward and then it looked okay for a couple of weeks and now it's kind of grown past looking okay with this haircut. Um, it is the beginning of May. I am hoping that my age group, I turn 40 at the end of this month and the over 40s I believe are currently like just now getting their vaccination appointments and the under 40s haven't yet. So hopefully by the end of the month it should be maybe my turn. Either it will be the under third, you know, like the next age group just under 40 
or having turned 40, I might, I don't know. Um, I, sorry, I'm now looking at this curl and not knowing what to do with it. Anyway, hopefully, fingers crossed, I will be vaccinated in the next month or so. And then where was I going with this? Um, wanting to go out a few more. I don't know. I don't know why I was starting to say that. I'm sure I had a reason when I started that. Um, oh, that badge isn't really, I'm wearing a cute little badge. It says, so tired. And it's a little cat with a tutu and a wand, but it's, the light is hitting it in a funny way. Don't be like that. Oh dear. I'm gonna have to take it off, aren't I? Cause otherwise it's just gonna shine weird. Um, why was I saying that? This is Sugar and Sloth, by the way, if you're interested. Doo -doo. So tired. That's me. My four-year-old would like me to give her that badge because it's got a cat with a tutu and a wand. And the other one wants it because it's a cat. And I've had to tell them both they can't have it because it's me and I am so tired. And my four-year-old keeps telling me that I am not tired or I would be in bed sleeping. And I'm like, yeah, no, that's, that's unfortunately not how it works. So that was the finished object for the Confident Knitting, a year of techniques, a third year of techniques even. Um, this is Libby. She did not go out the window. Uh, so the new project, that was April's project. May's project is, I just have to check, the Variance Hat by Jeanette Budge. And I have just started, I've got the, the rim, the brim, that's the word, the brim, and I have just done this little prairie round. I got confused and accidentally added an extra row of the silver, but I don't mind. That won't really be a problem long term. Um, so yeah, these are the colors. I'm using the kit colors. Again, I got the kit and this was the alternate colorway for spring. And it looks really nice. It starts off with the gray, this, this light gray being the background and then the blues, and then it switches. So the blues are the background and then it's lighter colors. Um, doot, doot, doot. So this is the light one I'm using. It will be these four in the front. Um, maybe these four? Anyway, these colors at least will be a star on top of doot, 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 these colors and These are in there somewhere too. I've looked it up. I print out, it's a black and white chart and I kind of took some crayons and colored in the background color so I'd know where it's changing and I need to do something for the foreground color but I haven't really, haven't really looked at it yet because while I can handle a corrugated rib brim, I did not think my poor little cold brain was up to dealing with changing two different colors every couple of rows to do the body of the hat. I am knitting this on three millimeter double point needles. Um, these are the Knit Pro carbons. That's the word. Because um, I do not currently have a good length for a short circumference on three millimeter. And I did check I have knit other Fair Isle hats in the past. This is 2020's Shetland Wool Week designer hat um, in the Jameson and Smith colorways suggested in the pattern. 
when I checked my pattern notes to see what size the needle I knit this on and it is 3.0 millimeter and I've got a couple other hats all my, my notes for all of them say that they were knit on 3.0 millimeter so that is what I've done this hat see I said I wasn't gonna script my hair and now I'm putting on this hat this hat has the advantage of having knit it last year so I was wearing it in lockdown early lockdown this time last year I wove in the ends today Doo -doo, the little ends I didn't want them to be sticking out of the bottom of the hat when I showed it to you so I took a minute just to weave them in and snip them off it took 30 seconds honestly it was not a thing at all so yes uh, that is the Confident Knitting Knit Along. April's finished. May is started. Which brings me to the SCR1TNO, Sharon of the SCR1TNO podcast. Stripey Sock Knit Along, which is an annual, a whole year knit along. And each month you can enter finished socks. I'm sorry, the sun just got really bright. Um, and it's kind of high enough up that even closing the blinds wouldn't particularly help much. Each month there is a selection, a commercial dyer, and then a small handful of indie dyers. If you knit socks using any of those yarns, yarns from those company people, then you get a double entry for the month. Otherwise you just get a single entry. So for this last month, I knit these head over heel socks because I thought they were, well, I did think the, the commercial dyer for the month was King Cole and I thought these were, but then when I pulled them out, they were Stylecraft and I said, I'll just knit them anyway. They actually, the stripes do line up. Um, they line up going into the heel and they line up somewhat less successfully coming out of the heel, but right now, actually, I don't. You can't really see it. I mean, you can kind of see it like a little here. Mm. But yeah, they are. I did a really good job of lining them up. And what I did was I just started. There was a color change at the top of the ball, which was the blue into yellow. So I found that point and did a long tail cast on. And then for the second sock. Unfortunately, I had just finished the blue into the yellow, so I had to pull out a full color repeat. But then I was able to do the blue into the yellow starting the second sock. So if you want perfectly matched socks, um, that is one way to do it. So these are my entry for April, uh, which is just a single entry because it was neither the the commercial nor the indie dyers and this month I do have the commercial dyer which is Zauber Ball because my confident knitting project for March was a pair of fingerless mitts that I should have grabbed and brought for you um, knit in Zauber Ball in their double plied colorway which I will not name because it is an ableist slur um, but I thought I would start the socks. So I have the first sock. And as you can see, the colors, it's two different plies, marled together, doo -doo 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 -doo. and then we got to here, and one of the plies changed. It was still the same color, but it was clearly at a different point in the repeat. Um, so I actually made the sock just a little bit shorter so that that would be in the heel and not part of thing because I was hoping to get a light stripe coming out of the heel which I managed to do but there was really no point worrying too much about trying to hide the yarn used in the heel flap because <laughs> the colors have now both marls have lined up um, they do separate again like I can see uh, where it's in the ball right here, you can see there's two colors together. But they they largely at this point for a while, I'm pretty sure this sock is going to end with these kind of solid 
bunches and then my next sock is going to start that way and then go into a more marled appearance as it goes down the sock. These are going to be fraternal. I do not care enough to try to yarn boss it or anything. This is just the way it's going to look. So this is my first one. As you can see, I've almost finished the toe. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. My feet are a little longer than the sock blockers, but yeah, I just need to do, it's also a different size sock blocker, but I just need to do a little bit more like another inch and then toe decreases. So that is my first one. Both of these are, excuse me, I'm starting to get a little tickle in my throat. Both of these are knit as a vanilla pattern, which is largely just a vanilla pattern off of the top of my head. But I did sign up for Yarn Harlot's Patreon and it's something like two quid a month. She just has one flat fee she says because she's a, a socialist, a Canadian socialist. Um, so she doesn't think that people who have more money to spend should get better things. Um, but she started the, the Patreon. I've started at the beginning and I'm going to watch the videos through with like 10 hours of Patreon videos or, you know, videos um, on knitting a pair of top-down heel flap and gusset socks as you know like how to understand the construction so that you can just knit one off the top of your heads without thinking about a pattern um so that is how i knit these with the suggestion she has Ta -da! Um, and that is how i'm knitting the other ones although for these ones i did decide to do a two by two rib, although I realized about halfway through the heel flap that when I split to the heel flap, I should have done it um, in the middle of the knits or purls. And I didn't. So they're going to look slightly asymmetrical, which, you know, that's what happens. I will just try to remember to do it so that the asymmetricalness will be mirrored on the socks. Um, rather than having two identical socks, I'll have them mirrored so that when I wear them, like both feet are getting the same inside out treatment or whatever. Uh, yes, so that is my second knit along, which is the SCR1 TNO knitting podcast stripey sock knit along. Um, and these are both being run the Confident Knitting Knit Along is being run on the acknitwear.co.uk website. They have their own forum. And the Stripey Socks are being run on Ravelry and Instagram. And Sharon has created a Mighty Networks but hasn't opened it for anyone to join yet. So there will be other things people can do for those. Um, and I have one other finished object which is I crocheted a bee. I do not have a picture of the bee, but hopefully, let me just write a timestamp down. Hopefully I will put in a picture of the bee. It is a 365 crochet pattern, a free pattern on the website, or you can pay for a PDF. Um, and I changed the colors so that it would look more like UK bumblebees. I bought my little guide. Oops, the bees are on the other side. Um, a guide to various bees of the British Isles. And I kind of was going for this one, but I think I got a bit more like this one. It happens. They're both I'm oh the bumblebees here are just like flying little teddy bears they are I think they're like that big and they're round and they're fuzzy and they're just like and they're so cute I love them to death so I did I crocheted specifically that kind of bumblebee um, rather than a honeybee with the yellow with the black stripe kind of look which is what the pattern suggested or had instructions for 
uh, yeah, so that's the other thing. I just made that Wednesday. I sat down and, and did that. It's just a little bit, it, it's a bit wonky because I'm not very good at crochet. I had to look up all the terms. The wings use various different crochet stitches. And I had to look up every single one to get them all right. Um, yeah, not the best crocheter. Uh, it's cute and she really likes bumblebees, uh, bees in general, and I really like bees. So I was happy to make one for her. And now I'm looking around because I'm a little out of place. I have another work in progress. And this is my blanket that I am making with the Marvelous Monthly Minis. I just saw the card. What did I do with it? <coughs> No idea. I swear it was here. Oops, sorry. There are things in the bag from the around. Anyway, is there another bag in another bag? Another card in this month's bag? There is. So it is the Giddy Yarns, and this is the Marvelous Monthly Minis. Um, and I've got the April colors. I showed you the March colors last time, but I had not knit them in. So the March colors are up through this stripe of orange. Ta -da! So it started with the blues in January's. These kind of pinky purples was February. <coughs> Excuse me. And then it went from this speckle, it went the ruddy green into the oranges for March and now April is this this one it has the colors they're so pretty anyway it's this was the last one for March so it's these three colors are April and I have just joined a new one Oh, I've just finished one. Ha ha. So I've got three colors. One, two, three colors for April. I probably should have said, if you haven't gotten yours yet, look away. Sorry. Um, and then the last two colors will be, I can't really see what you see, but come out of the way, little one. Okay, so here is where we are at. This is a 12 month club. I had thought it was a 10 month club. The other club she's doing is a 10 month club. So then um, Helen can concentrate on admin calendars. But I will get 12 of these. I mean, I haven't paid for them yet. So assuming I keep paying for them and you know, they're moving house. So the house move goes smoothly and like all of those kind of things. The plan is 12 of these. So I will add these April ones and then I can add May and June to make it even bigger. But I was thinking when I finish April, I want to put this on a longer cable just so I can kind of see how it's going. Um, it kind of goes, you can't see this, but it kind of goes with my arm stretched all the way out straight across to the shoulder. Uh, if I blocked it severely, I would probably block it to five feet at this point like as a triangle I could probably block it to five feet along one edge but then you lose all the squishy garter stitch um, so yeah I think I'm just gonna do this one as a square got my little my little rainbow stitch marker from approximately where we were that's the wrong row. It should have been up. I moved it for something else and then I put it back. It should have been on this kind of 2D fruity color. Before this one that I think of as a rosy color because it's pink with the greens. It's coming out a lot darker on the camera than it is in person. Um, or maybe it's just the other side of the, the fabric looks lighter. I can't tell now. Anyway, I'm completely in love with this. I think it is gorgeous and 
the kind of thing other people will be jealous of because when I see other people knit things like this, I'm usually jealous of them. And yeah, I am absolutely loving this. I think she does have a few, I'm going to cough. Sorry about that. I was starting to say, I think Helen has a few extra packs of some of the months, but not all of the months on her website the last time I looked, which was a little while ago. It was probably when I signed up for the next three months of the club. So I'd be sure to get all the colors because I am loving that so much. On a very similar note, I'm just going to take some tea. On a very, very, very similar month, note, I have been getting the Henny Penny Makes Ta -da! Scrappy Yarn Packs, where she's doing a color therapy club where you get, there's different things you can order. And I'm doing the Scrappy Pack, which is 10 5 gram baubles that get you all the colors because otherwise you can do, there's a couple different bases and then there's either solids or speckleds and you get five of them. And then you get a little card explaining the month. And the first month, the first month came in a little small mailer box that can be sent as a large love letter. And the other ones came in different, like in little, um, cellophane bags in a, a different mailer. I am in the middle of my second block. I actually knit a different block because I had some, um, I gathered together a bunch of the pinks back in February when I got this. Now I've got the hiccups. Back in February when I got this, I gathered together a bunch of other pink minis that I have to see if I could kind of do, and I've thought about like a northeasterly, is that what it's called? Northwesterly, a northeasterly blanket, or do these little granny squares. And I haven't entirely, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here holding this. I haven't entirely decided what I am doing, but I am currently making some granny squares just to see how they knit up. And I've got, this is the January club. I got the February the March. I missed April, but she actually sent me an email saying, you know, I saw that you had ordered the other ones and you didn't order this one. And if you were interested and just missed it, the spares have been listed on the website. And if not, no problem. Don't worry. You know, like no pressure, please don't feel pressured, which was actually really nice because I had missed it. I've been going to the website um, starting around the middle of the month looking for it and it wasn't there and I feel like the other times I ordered you know the third week of the month or really late and they were still listed um, so I had I had just missed that one so I have ordered it along with the other one so they'll both come in the same parcel I don't need to obviously I am not ready for several months from now I am starting this tickle in my throat is not wanting to go away. Um, but yeah, this, this join is looking a bit wonky. And I don't know if I add, like if I fill in and do a four by four square, if it will start evening out a little, because I do have my lighted squares behind me. I'm also trying not to have the decrease line down the middle. And I think I'm going to change how I was doing that um, Though this one will still be the same as this one and then see where that gets me. So yeah, that's just, I just started that again on Wednesday because I wanted, apparently it was too much brain to skein up the next ball of this and knit on it. The rows are pretty long. So if you start a row, you really have committed yourself to going. Um, I think it's, starting to rain. It's still sunny outside. I don't know. The long rows, once you start a row, you, you really kind of want to get to the end of the row. And that was that was a lot. Um, so I just thought I'd do some little squares, but not the crochet squares. I'd already started these squares. 
I have to cough. Sorry about that. I had to go have a big coughing fit because apparently that is my lot in life. I've got a lozenge back in my throat again. I don't really remember what I was talking about. I hadn't quite made it to family stuff. As I mentioned, I've had a cold. We haven't done much. Uh, we did go into town yesterday, masked up, and we needed new shoes. Neither of my children had trainers that fit them. Um, so they both got new trainers. And I got some trousers for my husband, who he got new trousers for Christmas. New walking trousers, ones that would be more comfortable while walking and waterproof and stuff like that. Um, Christmas and his birthday, which is January, he got a new pair for each of them. Really expensive walking trousers. And because he's done so much walking, <laughs> they don't fit him anymore. Um, so I went and I bought him, but we didn't know what size he is wearing. So I bought two different sizes and one of them fits and one doesn't. So we can return one that doesn't and get him a second pair in the ones that do fit. Um, he had gotten some flannel lined ones and then some lighter waterproof ones. So this time I just got him some waterproof ones and then some less waterproofy good walking trousers so that he can walk comfortably. Um, it was a very expensive day. I also bought body lotion. I used to work at the body shop. In fact, when I started this podcast three years ago, three and a half years ago, it was right when I had turned in my notice and I think I had like two shifts left. Um, nothing against working at the potty shop. I enjoyed my five, seven. I enjoyed my time there for the most part. There are a couple of weird things, you know, it's a job and it's retail and nothing's ever perfect. Um, but when I left, I had a whole cupboard full of body shop products. Um, they are very generous with their employee discount and with uh, rewards and samples and various things throughout the year. Like when there'd be a new product launch, you'd often get a new, you know, um, a full size whatever to try. You got so many freebies a year that you could put to anything you wanted we'd if we hit various targets um for financial growth we got freebies there was if you won prizes you'd get freebies not like if you won competitions um those often weren't even body shop ones they were like things you could use elsewhere but you would also get body shop stuff having worked there for a number of years when I, um, I'm saying quit, but, you know, like I turned in my notice and I left very amicably. I bought body lotion for the first time yesterday. Um, and I got a bunch. I got, not just from the body shop, I went to, to Boots as well and got some other stuff because it's a fragrance I really like. But I bought, I only bought one body butter from body shop. But it is the first time I have bought a potty butter. I worked it out in three and a half years and I use body butters um, pretty much daily. In the summer I might use the yogurts more but I tend to have dry skin so I don't use shower gels. Um, when I was using shower gels and body butters my skin was still dry and like when I would move it I could feel like micro fissures cracking open in my dry skin. And one of my friends was like, then why are you using shower gel? Like, why are you drying your skin out that way? And I stopped. And now when I take a shower, like, I can feel the body butters and stuff rinse off. I can feel it. Um, friction. And my skin isn't dry anymore. And I'm going to cough again. Sorry about that. I am clearly out of talking. <laughs> um, I wish I had the... <sighs> health I guess is the word I wish I had the health to keep talking because I am this is a lot of fun for me and I really enjoy it um but yeah that's my body says I am done and I hope you are well if you made it this far thank you very much and I will talk to you fingers crossed in two weeks without this cold thank you very much have a good day
Bye.